Raw food has been around forever. It's the original food, like raw, uncooked food. Raw food, fresh fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds, and sometimes some sprouted grains. That's all it is. It's not innovative, but yet, now, raw food is innovative compared to what the food system is and to what most people eat most of the time. Two things. I'm going to tell you two things that are compromising your health. One is deficiency, not getting enough of what you need. And the second thing is toxicity, getting too much of what you don't need. Mm -hmm. This is like three salads in one pesto. And that's what you could do. You can eat this whole bag of spinach. You know how much nutrients is in that? Oh my goodness. I'll show you what it looks like. You see that? It's kind of chunky. So you can have this and make it for the week. People say, oh, raw food, it's so much work. You have to make food all the time. But you can make something like this in like five, 10 minutes, right? And you have this amount of pesto, you know, someone might eat it all in one sitting, but you can have this for like three, four days in the fridge. You can dip vegetables in it. You can put it on a cracker with some avocado. You can make some raw noodles, or even if you're eating pasta, you know, still make your own pesto without cheese. Easy things to do, make pâtés and things like this so that you can make them and have them for a couple of days during the week. So easy, super green, super yummy. And this is one of the things that you're going to be eating today. There's something going on here. I need to keep going. And this was a few weeks into doing the, the really applying the, the whole really low glycemic, 100% raw vegan diet, which I just made sense to me. So that was a big factor. And then lo and behold, about three months later, I had pretty much limited my inflammation. And my psoriasis had pretty much cleared up too. Food is really our biggest interface and factor with our environment in terms of like you're literally taking things and putting them into you and absorbing them. Um, yeah, things come in through your skin and you're, you're breathing stuff, but food is like, in terms of sheer volume and mass, that's the most stuff that you're exchanging with your environment. So it's, it's a huge factor, but there's other things that have to do with your body's internal environment, and that's your thoughts. And um, if you've ever been scared, right, your, your adrenal glands fire up and you, and you shoot out all this cortisol to give your muscles basically a, a turbo boost to get ready to fight or flight, right? But it's actually really toxic. And it's just one example of how your a psychological impulse, a thought, is affecting the environment of all your body cells, right? So that's, to me, another really important factor is this is a, maybe your psychological nutrition, or I don't have a good name for it, but just um, positive thinking seems to be pretty important. And I had a best friend who was a registered dietitian when I lived in Texas. And I was constantly sharing information with her. And finally she said to me, I want to invite you to come teach classes to me and my other friends who are registered dietitians because we don't understand nutrition in the way that you do. And so for five years, I taught classes to registered dietitians mm -hmm. about the importance of vegetarianism, veganism, raw food, and the fact that at this time there were no studies, but I knew just from watching my body and all of the other dancers, all calories are not equal. Mm -hmm. If you take in 2,000 calories worth of animal products, you are going to be a vastly different person in a completely different state of health than someone who takes in 2,000 calories worth of high con nutrient content vegetables, fruits, grains, all of the other things. Uh, there are lots of resources available now in the way of books, in the way of people like Jillian who teach classes. Um, I bring people together to enjoy raw food and a movie on a regular basis. It's happening all over the Bay Area now. And there are people like Tim who have a whole movement going on in their own way supporting all of this. Michael and I are going to be showing his uh, movie, Simply Raw, in the next few weeks here mid-peninsula. So if you're interested in getting an invitation and seeing that film, we have a mailing list. Please put your email down, and we'll make sure you get an invitation to it so you know when and where it's happening. Having someone go through the healing process is so much more powerful than just hearing about it. So the film shows six people who were all insulin-dependent, type 2... I don't even like to label them. They, they were diagnosed with type 2 diabetes, and they were using insulin, all of them, at least using insulin. Some of them were using up to 17 additional medications 
from the pharmaceuticals as well. And the film chronicles them from before, right in the middle, all 30 days, and after. And seeing them is like nothing else. You're in, you're up in their life. You're seeing their crises. There, there's, a, there's a healing, there's crises and opportunity, you know. You've all kind of heard that. Healing crises occur, and the film is all about showing it. So you actually know what's in the process of, of letting go of thoughts and beliefs and patterns of eating and living that don't serve. But it's hard to let go. Breaking up is hard to do. And, um, and then the, the ecstasy and joy and elation of, wow, there's so much more potential in me than I realized. Wow, I feel like I've never even known what's possible. And all that, and you see it. And some people actually don't complete it because it was too much. We tried, in fact, we succeeded in, in not sugarcoating it and showing the real story. Back to Bruce Lipton uh, um, with the biology of belief and, and the epigenetics. It's fascinating that what he calls, I think, is that people think the brain of the cell is a nucleus, where the DNA is. He calls the brain of the cell the cell membrane. Because the cell membrane perceives and, and gets information about what's in the plasma, what's in the body, and then sends signals to the nucleus to say, how safe is it out there for what level of the gene's expression? And then the, the genes you know, transcribe and make proteins and make everything else at the level that the body is going to be able to work with. So when our blood environment is, is at its highest, you know, alkaline, not too over filled with sugar, fat, you know, filled with phytonutrients, all these things that circulate in the blood, um, it can say, okay, make the highest level of what you can replicate, of what you can transcribe. The body's ready for it. The environment can use what you're going to make. It's amazing. That, was that fully explained clearly? Um, so, yeah. Yeah. So the brain of the cell is, is the cell membrane, reading what's in the plasma. And that's one of the reasons why Dr. Cousins has a 21-day program, because 21 days is the amount of time it takes for most of the genes to get switched from the membrane to tell the nucleus, uh, make a higher level of genetic expression, epigenetic expression, because... The body's ready for it, and the mind is ready for it. The happiness signals are coming in, too. It's a feedback. 21 days, the genes change their expression, and that's the deeper level, one of the deeper levels of, um, of how the life foods work. The con whole conversation happening in allopathic and traditional medicine that is still in its early stages, but it could be a sea change. And, um, you know, you hear about healthcare, this, have the healthcare reform bill and whatever, the parts you don't hear about are the parts that matter. And the parts that matter are, some of it is really around um, funding, how we pay for healthcare, to align the incentives towards health instead of aligning incentives towards sickness, yeah. right? Yeah. Which is what we have, what we have right now is a, a sick care system. <clears throat> Every physician in every hospital and every organization gets paid for sick people, right. not for he healthy people. Right. And there's this thing called an accountable care organization, which you may have heard of. It hasn't gotten a lot of press, but it it's, um, says that we want to build organizations that take care of a population of patients that are responsible for their health and get paid for health <laughs> as opposed to paid for illness, because <laughs> it's really way more important than whether everyone's insured. I mean, you could argue about whether everyone should be insured and all those other things, but this is a fundamental different way of looking at it. Absolutely. And physicians know this, but there's no, we have built the absolute opposite. You could not design a system as poor as what we have today, no matter how hard you tried <laughs> in, in this issue. And so it's a... Um, I think that there really are a lot of physicians who are ready and willing and have known this is going to be coming for a long time, a lot of really good people who, who will support this and, and it's going to take a while.
but it, there is some hope in, in what's happening.